this video we will be discussing inner joins across multiple tables. So, you're probably wondering, okay, what does that mean? Well, when we have a join, we join multiple tables. But what if we want to join that join of multiple tables with more tables? So basically, we're going to have a join over three or more tables. I'm trying to find my green marker, I can't find it. There it is. Okay, how does this work? Well, let's just draw some boxes just to kind of get an idea of how this might look. Okay, so you may be like, okay, cool, we figured out inner joins and how those work, but how do they work when you have three tables? Let's, let's find out. Here we have three tables, and when we do an inner join, let's say in the last example we joined these two tables, we had some kind of join condition, which was something like customer dot customer ID equals card dot customer ID, you know? Well, it doesn't always have to be that, it just depends on what you're doing with it. But basically, you're going to have a join condition right here. And you're also going to have a uh, join condition right here if you want to join in another table. These tables don't necessarily have to be uh, connected, like a, a many-to-many -many relationship. Because when we designed many-to-many -many relationships, it looked like this with like the intermediary table. It's not always the case. For example, this table could have a relationship with this table, and this table could have a relationship with this table, but this table doesn't necessarily have to have a relationship with this table. Think of it like this. When you do the join on these two tables, you're going to get a result set, right? Then if you want to know what your next results are going to be when you add this table in, think of joining these, and you're going to get a final result set. So if you do an inner join across multiple tables, the end result set is going to be smaller than this. Because you think about it, if you join these two tables, you get a result set. But now, you have to take all of these rows, and you're only going to display the ones that meet the requirements of this join condition, which is going to decrease the size or the amount of rows in this table, and it's going to be shorter. Most cases. Now, let's talk about this a little more. Let's go through the example we had before with the cards and the customer, but we're going to add a new table, right? So we're just going to draw this out a little bit. This is the uh, customer table, and we had a customer ID, a first name, last name, you can also have any other junk you want to store about the customer in there. Then we had the card table. We had the card, card ID, and then the customer ID, and then the like max amount or whatever else you want to store about the card, or the bill, or whatever, the price, or the interest rate. Now, let's throw in another table in this equation. Let's throw another table into this equation. It's going to be a card type table. So you know when you get like a credit card, because all you college students are like, yeah, I need pizza. Well, there's, that card has a type, such as Visa, MasterCard, or whatever else, uh, American Express. Well, that's kind of like the card type. Generally, a bank would just give out like one card type, but we could say that they can, like, we could just say what kind of card type the card in this table is. Now, when you structure it that way, how many different card types are there? Mm, four or five main ones, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, maybe two other ones that are somewhat popular. There's not that many. So if you were to store that in a column, in this one, you're going to get a lot of repeating data. And then, for example, if MasterCard decides to change their name or they get bought out by somebody else, and all the cards now are named ultra card <laughs> then that's going to cause problems because all of the um, you're gonna have you're gonna have a master card and then ultra card it's gonna be confusing so what you can do is use a lookup table which we discussed in a long video ago and that's just going to be basically a reference to another table with all the possible options and that way if you need to do, add a new option you can do that easily and then just reference that or if you need to update an option or if you want to put extra information about that option. 
For example, if MasterCard has a standard fee or something, you could put that within the card type table rather than within the card table. Because if you have the card table, like look, if you have card ID and then you have card type and then you have something about that card type, so card type interest or something, well, this is a transitive dependency, which is a violation of the normal forms, I believe, second normal form. Did I forget? Third normal form. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyways, that's not good, so you'd want to take these and put them in a new table. So a lookup table is a defense against problems like that, and it also reduces uh, integrity problems, and it can also reduce repeating values. So now let's design this. We're going to have a lookup table, which is card type. And this is going to have card type ID, and then the card type, which is going to be like the name of it. And then you could have any other rows about the card type in there. And then in the card, we're going to reference that with the foreign key. So it's just looking it up the values through the, through the uh, lookup table. So we're going to have card type ID. That is a foreign key. Now let's draw these connections. Customer ID is a foreign key to the customer, and the card type ID is a foreign key to the card type. So you can see we have all this information spread out over three tables, and we want to uh, add a we want to join these and create a new generated table that contains information from all three. We want it to be an inner join in this case, but you can do the same thing with outer joins and other types of joins. We'll be discussing this soon. But for this, we want it to look like this. This is what we want our generated view or our new table to look like. We want to select stuff about the customer. I'm just going to add some columns in there just to put them in here. We could have um, the First name, last name, email, phone, amount paid, and then we could also have the card type right here. Need some more room here. You guys want to know something cool while we're completely off topic, just for a second? I always like drew comics as a kid, and I always like drew a, a bubble around like a, either a thought or a talk. <laughs> And then I try to fit all the words into that, and it never worked. And then my master drawing friend was like, dude, draw the words first, and then draw the bubble around it. It was like the best idea ever, but I still don't do it. I mean, I always have to erase the sides of my database tables to fit more junk in there. I should always write the words first and then draw a square around them. But this will work. <laughs> These are all from this table. This is from this table. The card type is from this table. It's a join across three tables, and you could, of course, add more. Now, the join conditions, well, it would be, for this, the customer ID is the same as the customer ID, and the card type ID is the same as the card type ID. So this table first is going to exclude, here, I'll just write out what it's going to exclude. This isn't part of the table, but I'm just putting it here. It's going to exclude uh, customers with no card, cards with no customers. That's going to be the first join condition, because we're going from here. And then the second join condition, it's going to remove cards with uh, no card type, and also card types with no cards. And that means, basically, if you have MasterCard as a card type, and you haven't created any card rows that also have the foreign key that references MasterCard or whatever I said, then that's not going to be included because there would be nothing to put with it. And just say MasterCard, no, 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 no. That's because no cards have it and no people have cards that have it. So that's what an inner join is going to do. It's going to do all of this. So the end result is going to basically get smaller and smaller and small, smaller for every single table you add. Now, there's a couple other things to think about here. It has to do with things being null or not null. Okay, let's talk about it. 
The way we have it set up is the customers, they can have a card, but they don't have to have a card. That's because there's no required column in here that says you have to have a card ID. So you could have a customer that has multiple cards, for example. We also have a card table. And the way we have it set up, the card doesn't necessarily have to have a customer. If you want to change that, you could take this customer ID right here, and you could make it not null. That is going to change the end result, because now every single card is going to have to have a customer. That means cards with no customers, although functionally it's removing all the cards with no customers, Every single card has a customer, so the end result doesn't eliminate cards with no customers. Functionally, it does, though, because that's what the inner join does. But since there's none to remove, it doesn't do anything. So you can kind of think of it as not doing this, even though functionally it does. Remember that. It's a difference. All right. Now, we also have it where the card... I would say it should have a card ID, or a card type ID, I should say, because almost every card you're going to get ever is going to have a card type, right? Unless for some reason they wouldn't, you'd likely have that as not null. So functionally this is going to remove cards without card types, but since it's labeled as not null, every single card is going to have a card type. Therefore, in the end result, it doesn't really remove cards with no card type because every card has a card type, so there's nothing to remove. Now, card type, there might be a possibility you're offering a new card type, such as, let's say, I can't think of any cool names, like, legit card type 12, and like a new company comes out and they're, you get a legit card type 12 card and well, all through your new bank account, and that might you when you first get that there might not be a card that has been issued that card type yet so in the end result you're only really removing the customers with no cards and um i guess the card types with no cards i'm going to keep that so that's going to stay so these two are going to be removed and this is the end result here we're going to keep card types with no cards and customers with no cards that was a big one Man, my throat hurts. <sighs> okay, but that's about all, guys. So if you understood that, good job, because I don't. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe.